The ASA Pro Tour season lasts for about eight months. It draws the best skaters from all over the world. At the end of the season, it all culminates in the World Championships. But there's two major titles at stake, talking about in the bird discipline and the street discipline. There's a World Championship, and whoever wins that contest is the World Champion. But there's also the Tour Champion, where these guys have been accumulating points all season, and they come into this final contest. Whoever has the most points at the end of the season is the Tour Champion. This year was a little different than years past. The way the rankings work is it's based on your top eight scores. This year there were only eight stops, so only those skaters who went to every stop that weren't injured had the best chance of getting the number one ranking. AT Asatoka was so dominant last season that it seemed like it served as a wake-up call for the rest of the field. After seeing what Ato did last year with his new tricks and how well it worked for him, this season we see everyone coming out with new tricks, trying to really compete for every contest with Shane Yoss, Ty Chris, Ato Yasutoko, and Takeshi Yasutoko all showing up for every contest. But on street, it always seems to be a different group of guys contending from season to season. You always see a couple of familiar faces, like last season, Sven Bokers won the title, and this year he was competitive again as well. And also, Jaron Grobe, of course, really came on strong last season. This season, he continues with that momentum. And also, you've got guys like Sam Fogarty, who are always in the hunt. But we also saw a couple of new faces this season, guys like Jason Stinsman and Ryan Dawes. On the street course, it was a matter of many different styles up near the top of the rankings. Ryan Dawes had that sort of gymnastic style. Sven Bokers, more of a tech style. And then the go big guys like Jaron Grobe and Aaron Feinberg. On Burt, Ty Chris, Eito Yasutoko, and Sam Fogarty weren't in the top five, and they had to make their way up. I got third and third in street and Burt. So I was happy. It's probably the best result I've had all year, and I was happy to do it. The same contest, have a top three in both. Fogarty started the year off with a bang, and you get excited because you always want to see what new tricks he's bringing. Sam places an emphasis on innovation, and the reason that he's able to stay in the top five every season on vert and on street is he's always constantly lear learning new tricks and bringing new tricks to anything that he skates. On the vert ramp, you'll always see him bringing out new grind variations, uh, whether it's the X grind or it's his 360 to soul. And on the street course, it's the same thing. You see him always pushing himself, learning new tricks. Especially on street, Sam's been pushing the limits. Even as far into the season as the White Marsh Mall in Baltimore, he was still ranked third. And so you always see Sam at the top of the rankings. And once again, going into the World Championship, Sam was ranked in the top five in both disciplines. He was ranked fifth in the world on on Burt and he's ranked third in the world on the street. There have been a few unbelievable skaters on the Pro Tour that have helped define rollerblading on Vert. Shane Yost, one of those, still in the hunt for number one. The ASA Pro Tour's Year in Review 2001 is brought to you by YooHoo, America's favorite chocolate drink, skates on or skates off. By Paul Mitchell, the style and lifestyle sports. And for all the latest on skating, check out ASAskate.com. You're watching ASA Year in Review on ESPN. After finishing last season ranked number one, Shane Yoss came out this season with all the hope and all the promise of defending his tour championship title and also determined to win the world championship. But he stumbled coming out of the gate. He wasn't airing very high. He wasn't even throwing his best tricks. And he was falling at critical moments in contests. Yeah, Anaheim uh, being the first comp for the year, you know, sort of getting back into it. Really a redefining stage, uh, trying to learn how to skate like the way I wanted to skate. I had uh, programmed myself, you know, uh, to do, try and do a lot of tricks, you know, in a very short amount of time. And I uh, kind of had to break it up a little bit and try and get my height back and stuff like that so I kind of balanced myself out a little bit instead of being so one-sided. Yeah, in Louisville, you know, I thought I was doing okay, but, uh, you know, coming fourth, which isn't too bad, but, uh, you know, it just wasn't enough to hold that number one spot. Oh, I love a Dallas was another one of those comps that, you know, didn't quite go so well for me. I was, was trying uh, to work the, the opposite 1080 that I've been trying sort of uh, most of the year. Didn't really pay off that day. Bristol wasn't really a breakout performance for Shane. I mean, he finished in fifth place, but it was good enough to put him back in the number one spot as far as the rankings were concerned. And once Shane had that number one ranking, it seemed like he really started to gain confidence again, and then he could taste it, and he, he, that's when he really started to raise the level of his skating. Well, as the season went on, you could 
you could really see Shane's confidence starting to grow. He was throwing much more difficult rhyme variations. His air started getting much higher. And probably most importantly, he was throwing his biggest tricks. He was throwing tricks like the 1260 and the Switch 1080. Yeah, Baltimore was pretty cool. Uh, just come off the X Games, so, you know, the vibe and tension was pretty high. You know, everyone was pumped. I managed to, you know, keep everything together and my line come together, and it was just a culmination of the year's trouble together and paid off. So I was stoked. Shane's getting great with 1260 12, everything, so. The main thing that I was kind of working on this year was to get my airs back, really. So it was, uh, yeah, this year has been a real learning phase, going back to basics. It's been a tough year for me. It's been a busy year for Shane Yost, going out with Ty Chris, doing demos all over the world, including the Del Mar Fair. Delmar Fair, not only do we want the traditional activities, we want to be more innovative in our approach and attract these teenagers to the fair. And we feel the ASA, with their example for the young kids, uh, their sportsmanship, their quality uh, with national riders, it will bring that element to the fair, and we certainly enjoy watching them. I always love, you know, to do demos because you have no pressure, the crowd are crazy, and you play with the crowd, you know, you try to do crazy tricks. Giving them something to watch and giving them something to take home and say, yeah, you know, I checked out skating today and it's really cool. And I think, um, you know, that inspires kids, uh, gives them a, a chance to see, hey, these guys are doing this for a living. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe there's, uh, there's a chance that I might be able to do the same. Aito completely dominated the vert field last season. But because of an injury, he was unable to skate in the World Championships, and the World Championship points are worth double. So his ranking dropped all the way to eighth in the world after the World Championships were over. So he comes into this season, or he came into this season, ranked eighth in the world after having this completely dominant season where he won the X Games, he won virtually every contest that he entered. So all of a sudden he finds himself in this position of having to play catch up. No one knows what the time frame is. Drag my words in the rhyme and repeat it to you in sign language. Give me what you got if you make Now, on the other hand, you've got his younger brother, Takeshi, who also had a great season. It wasn't anywhere near as dominant as Atos, but he finds himself ranked number three in the world after having a very consistent season, doing very well, well in last year's world championship. So you fast forward to the world championships and you find that going into this contest, Takeshi has worked up from number three to number two in the world in the world rankings and Eito Yasutoko has worked all the way up from eighth place back into the number one spot with a chance at redeeming himself after basically forfeiting the world championship just the season before. Like she's always quiet, like normal, you know, and you never expect him, expect from him, you know, to have like different reaction, you know. And in Baltimore, because he fell, he fell everything. He started to be angry, to throw his helmet, to kick the ramp, you know. And it was okay. It's not funny because he fell, you know. And I could, I was angry also when I fell, but it was weird and funny to see him reacting like that. Yeah. My brother was angry. He's he's always angry. I was angry. Yeah. Well, with all the international guys throughout the year doing so well, it was nice to see Matt Lindemuth really pushing bird skating with his new double back. Welcome back to the ASA on ESPN. He's been the most dominant skater this season on the Pro Tour, hands down. He's won every contest that he's entered, except for one. He won the X Games, he won the Gravity Games, he's got all the momentum going his way. Bristol was like 
another V3, you know, it was big competition. Everybody was getting great. I did just two perfect runs, also in the final. So I won, you know. Uh, okay, the Japanese, like always, they were right behind me. Shane also skated good, so it was tough to, to win, but I did it. I really wanted to go to Dallas because, you know, I won. I didn't want to miss any camp of this year. But unfortunately, like right after the Wuchi Challenge, I hurt my rib and broke it. So I really could not go. I wanted, but I could not do it. You know? I went to Milwaukee for the summer fast. It was great, you know, like so many people. The ramp, like the crowd was crazy. I skated good, I won. So it was like just an amazing weekend. And just before that, I saw Lindsay doing this double back. I was really impressed because, you know, I never thought like somebody could do that. It's a really scary trick. I really wanted to do this trick. When I was trying it, people were still saying that it was never going to happen on vert, you know, and I started by learning double backs on launch box and you saw it at, in Las Vegas at the finals last year. And then uh, once I started trying it on the vert ramp, you know, I mean, it was a, a long process of getting it dialed in. The following weekend after World Team Challenge, I had the chance to ride in the Mobile Skate Park Series and it was perfect for me. I had Kevin Robinson, Jamie Bestwick, you know, guys who I ride with on a daily basis at Woodward. So them cheering me on at that event was an added incentive. And if it wasn't for the crowd chanting one more time and really getting me psyched up on it and amped to do it again, I don't think I would have gotten back up there, but I'm glad they did because, you know, the one that I threw for them, I was able to put my feet down and roll away. Baltimore was kind of weird for me because, you know, I just went off from the, from the X game and, you know, I had so much pressure there. I, I had not my mind, you know, to compete, you know, I was needing more a week break. And uh, then, you know, I could not land also the double back because the double back is so tough trick. And uh, so I didn't get skate that good, but, uh, but Shane skated great. So Ty Chris went into the World Championships in a real strange place. After dominating the entire season, he had a chance at winning the World Championship, but because of the way that the Pro Tour rankings work, Ty missed one stop due to injury, and another stop was canceled so that he didn't have a chance to make up those points. He had a chance at winning the World Championship, but he really didn't have a realistic chance of winning the Tour Championship. It was really cool to see on the street course as the year progressed that at the World Championships it really came down to two guys, Jaron Grobe and Ryan Dawes, both go big skaters. Welcome back to the 2001 ASA Pro Tours Year in Review. Tour veteran Mike Budnick has been around for a long time and he's really made his mark as being one of the most consistent on both street and vert. He's got strong opinions about where skating is and where it's come from. This week's profile is brought to you by Yuhu. I've been part of rollerblading now for a very, very long time. I've had rollerblades pretty much as long as anybody. It's something I'm really proud of. When you look at where rollerblading's come since then, I'm talking like mid 80s till now, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. For a while there, people were giving rollerblading a little grief because they were saying they were taking tricks from skateboarding or taking tricks from this or that. And if you watch any rollerblading contest now, or, or especially any rollerblading um, video with the street skating, rollerblading has taken on its, its own identity in, in an enormous way. And with the way rollerblading is going right now, you have all of these huge tricks being done on the vert ramp. You see people doing not only just the hugest airs, I'm talking like 10 foot airs, like like Ato's doing these days and Takeshi and all these guys, but but the spins they're throwing, the, the flat spin 1080s, the 1260s, the double backflips. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. And it's a perfect combination of where skateboarding is and where biking is. You're able to go as fast and as high as a bike and also able to do as technical and as hard of a trick as any skateboarder. And if you look at the street course now and you see not only someone like Jaron Grobe going 10 feet high over his spine, I mean, there's no other athlete, no other sport that can even compare to what, what you see when you see someone do that. And it's unbelievable to, to see what what everybody's doing nowadays. And it's, it's something I'm really proud of to be, to be part of a sport like this where everyone's just stepping it up day after day. Every single time I go to a contest, every single time I watch a video, I, I'm impressed. And it seems like a lot of the other sports have been kind of just doing the same thing now for a while. And they're like just riding the wave that they've been on for years now. And, and 
rollerblading is completely opposite. I'm, I'm, it's honestly amazing watching how, how fast and how, just how fast it's progressing. The street contests tend to be a little more wide open. Going into the championships, really you had several guys contending for that number one spot. Brian Shima came out in Anaheim at the first event of the year and absolutely demolished. Everybody thought he was going to have an absolutely massive year on the tour, but he got so busy doing other tours for his team and his skate sponsors that he wasn't able to make it to any of the other stops. Louis Zamora has always played a big part on the tour. While it's not his biggest priority, every time he comes out to an event, he dominates. Rookie Chris Felina really made his mark, becoming the 2001 Rookie of the Year this year, qualifying for the X Games. Vinny Minton tried some huge, difficult tricks. Another young guy on the tour surprised everybody with his unique tricks. Aaron Feinberg, two-time tour champion, came out and dominated at some of the big trick contests, winning the Corn Nut Sick Trick Comp in Huntington Beach this year. And Carlos Pianowski, the 2001 most improved skater on the tour, tried so many big stunts throughout the year, really making a mark for himself. And Randy Marino out of Texas, nobody ever doubts his excitement, but I don't think anybody thought he was gonna be the first ever to do the loop. I think he even surprised himself in Hermosa Beach. Frankie Morales, here's a guy that everybody thought would do well if he just came to enough events on the tour. This year, that's exactly what happened. Going into the World Championships in ninth place, had a shot to make it into the top five. And Blake Dennis really came into his own this year. Everybody knows that he's good, but this year really excelling, even stepping it up more with his technical ability. Tasting victory three times, including the gravity games. Ben looked like he was starting to regain his championship form, winning that Baltimore contest, getting that momentum going into the finals. But he really didn't have a chance at winning the tour championship on points because he, he wasn't at enough contests. Jason Stensman, in his second year on the tour, really started to climb up the rankings with some uh, impressive launching tricks. And Ryan Dawes really established himself as one of the top contenders this season as well, putting together uh, creative and exciting lines. Ryan Dawes started the season ranked number six in the world and to be honest with you i'm not sure if many people realized that ryan had climbed that high in the rankings but he really did have a breakout season last year but now this season he continued with that continued to put together these exciting lines and really established himself as one of the most dynamic skaters on the street course and he climbed all the way to the number two ranking in the world going into the world championships right behind jaron everybody loves watching jaron grove skate he's by far one of the most unpredictable and explosive skaters this year, throughout the year, taking top four every time he skated. Now you find Ryan Dawes and Jaron Grobe both in position to win the World Championships and the Tour Championships all in one fell swoop. There's been some insane skating all year long, big tricks, a rankings race, and you can catch it all on ESPN and ESPN2. Just go to asaskate.com for all the latest listings. There are several huge multi-sport events that happen over the course of this season, but there's only one that's devoted exclusively to rollerbladers, and that's the ASA Pro Tour World Championships. Here in Review 2001 is brought to you by Corn Nuts, hardcore snacking for hardcore skating. Corn gone wrong. By Levi's, make them your own. And by the North Hills Mall, discover the difference at the mall of the future. Shane Yoss took a podium finish at the X Games, and he won the final ASA Pro Tour stop going into the World Championships uh, in Baltimore on the strength of his 1260. Well, when you live by the sword, you die by the sword, and Shane Yoss was not able to land his 1260 at the World Championships, so he finished in fourth place. Takeshi Yasutoko took second place in the World Championships and moved up into second place in the World Rankings. Ty Chris capped off a dream season with a dream run. He put together a run that exceeded everyone's expectations, and expectations were high. He had the double backflip, he had his gato spins, and he incorporated those channels in the gaps better than anyone else. 
and Ty Chris truly was a champion on that day. But Ty was not the tour champion. In a bit of poetic justice, Eito Yasutoko finally claims that tour championship that eluded him just a season ago when he had to sit out the world championships with an injury. So now, Ty Chris, who is this season's most dominant skater, will have to wait another year before he gets another shot at the tour championship. Just making it into the top 10 at any finals contest is a pretty respectable accomplishment in and of itself. But once Sam got into the top 10, he seemed to get stuck on this one trick. He kept going back and back and back. He was determined, but it cost him, and he finished in dis disappointing 10th place. Jason Stinsman threw his double backflip. Actually, he brought out a new double backflip with a stale grab. So he had some moments in his run, but ultimately it lacked balance between the technical grinds and the big spins, and he finished in 7th. After finishing the season so strong with the win at the Baltimore stop, Sven finished in fourth place, just narrowly missing a podium position at the World Championships. And I think that he surprised everyone at the end of his run when he went for a, a disaster on the death rail and totally wrecked himself. Cherry Lelamon, who was not much of a factor throughout the Pro Tour season, came out in the World Championships and came away with third place. In second place was Aaron Feinberg, who was a former World Champion and who in his first run threw some of the most difficult tricks of the contest. And then his second run, he didn't seem to really be trying. In fact, it was clear that he was just goofing off. He, he did come up with one super, super trick in the second round, probably the best trick of the contest. But unfortunately for Aaron, it was not a best trick contest. Aaron left the door wide open for Jaron, and of course, Jaron seized upon it. In true championship style, as we've seen him do all season long, Jaron knows how to finish contests, he knows how to win contests, and he did it in exciting fashion. Jaron came away with a tour championship, he won the season on points, finished ranked number one, and he is the world champion for the 2001 ASA Pro Tour season. No one's been more dominant in women's skating than Fabiola Da Silva. Coming into the World Championships ranked number one in both street and vert, she capped the year off ranked number one in both. While Martina Svobodová beat her on street, she wasn't able to hold on to the first ranking. In the men's street, Frankie Morales made it into the top five. Jason Stinsman moved up to fourth. Ryan Dawes was never able to hit Jaron Grobe, who took first. And on vert, it was all about the Yasu Tokos. Ryan Dawes, the big honors in this week's Corn Nuts Sick Trick. Special thanks to Rocky Talkie, the official two-way radio provider of the ASA. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.